Deep beneath the roar of the world's oceans, a hidden force keeps the giants of the sea in motion. The ship propeller. Each one weighs up to 80 tons, costs over a million dollars, and is built to push vessels the size of skyscrapers across roaring waves. Today, we're stepping inside one of the world's most powerful metalworking facilities. A ship propeller plant where molten bronze, precision casting, and engineering mastery come together to create blades larger than a two-story house. From molten metal at 1200 degrees H to 200 degrees Therf, to the mirror-polished finish that slices through seawater with perfect balance. This is the incredible story of how ocean giants get their power. But before we dive in, hit subscribe so you don't miss more mind-blowing journeys inside the world's biggest factories. The history of ship propellers dates back to the 19th century. when wooden paddle wheels ruled the seas. But in 1836, Francis Pettit Smith, a British inventor, tested a screw-shaped propeller, and the age of modern propulsion began. By the 1900s, propellers evolved into the giant bronze masterpieces we know today. Each new generation brought improvements, better alloys, hydrodynamic modeling, and computer simulation. Today's factories combine traditional foundry art with robotic automation. Future propellers are already being designed with 3D printing, smart sensors, and self-healing coatings that resist corrosion automatically. Even now, naval engineers are testing electric propulsors and variable pitch blades for hybrid vessels. But no matter how far technology goes, one truth remains. The power that moves the oceans begins here in fire, metal, and human ingenuity. In the foundry, the heart of the plant, mountains of nickel, aluminum, and bronze alloys are prepared. This special metal blend is chosen for strength, corrosion resistance, and vibration absorption. Essential traits for marine life. Workers load giant crucibles, each capable of holding several tons of metal, into furnaces glowing white hot. Temperatures reach over 1200 degrees cells to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, enough to melt even the toughest materials into a golden liquid. Meanwhile, in another section of the factory, molds are prepared. Each propeller mold is a masterpiece on its own, built from sand and ceramic, carefully shaped to exact dimensions based on 3D scans. The process uses a lost wax casting method. A wax model of the propeller is made, coated in multiple layers of ceramic, then heated to melt out the wax, leaving behind a perfect cavity for molten metal. Now the two processes meet. Molten bronze is poured slowly and steadily into the mold. The liquid metal fills every crevice, bubbling and glowing as sparks fly. It takes dozens of tons of molten alloy to create a single blade. Once filled, the mold is left to cool for several days. As it solidifies, the alloy crystallizes into its final structure, dense, strong, and flawless. When the mold is finally cracked open, the factory reveals its treasure. A raw, solid, rough-surfaced propeller, the size of a small house, still warm, but ready for transformation. This is where brute force meets artistry. Now that the casting is done, the heavy metal artistry truly begins. Each raw propeller is lifted by massive overhead cranes, each capable of carrying over 100 tons. The piece is placed on specialized machining platforms where giant robotic arms and CNC machines get to work. The first stage, forging and trimming. Any excess metal from the casting is removed using plasma cutters and hydraulic saws. Then under extreme heat, technicians use hydraulic presses to shape and refine the blade angles, ensuring aerodynamic perfection. At this scale, even a one degree difference can change how the propeller moves water so precision is everything. 
Next, the rough machining stage begins. CNC, computer numerical control lathes, each the size of a bus, carefully carve away metal. Following digital blueprints accurate to within 0.2 millimeters, the machines move slowly, deliberately, each pass taking hours, sometimes days. Then comes fine machining, where the true shape and shine emerge. Special polishing tools grind the metal into its final contours, bringing the mirror-like finish that defines marine propellers. This polishing isn't just for beauty, it's about performance. A perfectly smooth surface reduces drag, boosts efficiency, and prevents corrosion. The process takes weeks of continuous work, with engineers constantly measuring, testing, and adjusting. Once machining is complete, the propeller undergoes dynamic balancing. It's mounted on a giant rotation rig and spun at high speeds. Sensors detect even the tiniest imbalance, and technicians adjust by removing or adding grams of weight, until the rotation is perfectly smooth. Imagine, an 80-ton chunk of metal balanced with milligram precision. That's the art of modern engineering. Even after machining, the propeller isn't ready yet. It must undergo rigorous testing to ensure it can survive decades of work beneath the sea. The first step is ultrasonic inspection. Technicians use sound waves to scan deep into the metal, looking for hidden voids or cracks. Even a single air pocket could compromise the blade's strength. Next, the propeller goes through X-ray analysis and dye penetrant testing, ensuring every weld and joint is flawless. Then comes mechanical testing. Sections of the same alloy batch are bent, stretched, and broken in laboratories to confirm strength, ductility, and corrosion resistance. After passing all these checks, the surface receives a special anti-corrosion coating. Marine propellers face not only water but also microorganisms, salt, and sediment, all of which can erode metal over time. Finally, the propeller is placed on a massive test stand, where it's rotated under load to simulate real ocean conditions. The noise, vibration, and torque are measured with extreme accuracy. If it passes, it earns its certification, and only then can it be shipped to the shipyard. When the finished piece is loaded onto a truck or barge, it's a breathtaking sight. An 80-ton bronze sculpture, shining like gold in the sunlight, destined to spend its life deep under the sea. At the shipyard, engineers prepare to install the new propeller. It's lifted by cranes taller than buildings, carefully aligned with the ship's shaft, and secured with massive bolts and couplings. Once fitted, it's tested in dry dock, rotating slowly at first, then at full power. When the propeller cuts through water for the first time, the ocean churns in a thunderous roar. It's a moment of pride for everyone involved, the culmination of thousands of hours of human effort, skill, and precision. These mega propellers can last over 30 years, propelling the same ship across millions of miles of ocean. Some are even refurbished after retirement, melted down, and reborn in the same plant, continuing a cycle of metal and motion. From the fire of the foundry to the depths of the sea, each blade tells a story of science, craftsmanship, and the eternal partnership between man and machine. If you enjoyed exploring the ship propeller plant, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video, because there are many more wonders of engineering waiting just below the surface. How machines as massive as airplanes, trains, or wind turbines can spin so smoothly without grinding themselves apart? The secret lies in one small but mighty invention. The bearing. Today we're taking you inside a supergiant bearing factory in America, where precision engineering meets raw power, and where millions of bearings are produced every year to keep our world turning. 
from tiny ones used in skateboards to massive ones used in wind turbines, this is a story of science, steel, and symmetry. Before we dive into the world of rolling perfection, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Every week, we uncover the incredible stories behind the world's most advanced factories, where technology transforms raw materials into everyday miracles. Every bearing begins with one essential ingredient, steel. But not just any steel. Bearings demand high carbon chromium steel, a type of alloy that must be extremely strong, hard, and resistant to wear and heat. The process begins with massive billets, steel bars weighing hundreds of kilograms, heated to over 1 to 1200 degrees tuned to feel. Once glowing red, they're cut into smaller slugs, the perfect size for the bearing rings. These slugs are then forged using hydraulic presses that exert tons of pressure, shaping them into rough rings. This forging process aligns the internal grain structure of the metal, giving it superior strength and durability. Because bearings must endure constant rotation, friction, and extreme load. After forging, the rings are cooled, cleaned, and sent to CNC machining centers. Here, precision takes over. Computer-controlled lathes carve out the exact dimensions, inner and outer diameters measured to microns, thinner than a human hair. Each ring goes through multiple turning, boring, and grinding operations. The goal is to create perfectly round, smooth surfaces that can house the rolling elements, whether balls, rollers, or needles. At this point, the rings already look like a bearing, but they're still soft steel. Next comes the step that gives them their legendary toughness. To handle decades of spinning, bearings must resist deformation. That's achieved through heat treatment, a process that hardens the steel. Rings are heated again to about 850 degrees Celsius, 560 degrees Farad, and then rapidly cooled in oil baths. This sudden temperature drop transforms the steel's structure into martensite, giving it extreme hardness and wear resistance. But the process isn't finished. The rings are then tempered at a lower temperature to reduce brittleness, balancing toughness with flexibility. Now each ring can endure years, even decades, of spinning under pressure. Once hardened, it's time for precision grinding, the most critical stage in bearing production. Grinding machines fitted with diamond wheels remove microscopic layers of steel, refining each ring's surface until it's mirror smooth. The tolerances here are astonishing, within 0.0001 inches, 2.5 microns. In the world of bearings, even a speck of dust can cause vibration or noise. That's why this process happens inside ultra-clean rooms, where temperature and humidity are tightly controlled. Some factories even use automated robots to handle each piece, ensuring that no human fingerprints or particles interfere with the final surface finish. The rings are ready, but they're useless without what makes a bearing roll. The balls or rollers. Steel wire is cut into tiny cylinders, heated and pressed into rough spheres using high-speed presses that produce thousands per minute. These balls are then heat-treated and ground in rotating drums, filled with abrasive paste until they reach a perfect sphere shape. To test precision, engineers use laser gauges capable of measuring roundness to one millionth of an inch. Only those that pass this extreme test continue to assembly. Those rejected are melted and recycled, nothing goes to waste. Now comes the moment of truth, assembly. In sterile assembly lines, the inner ring, outer ring, and rolling elements come together. A retainer or cage holds the balls evenly spaced to prevent contact and friction. In a single day, an automated line can assemble tens of thousands of bearings, each undergoing continuous quality checks using vibration sensors and laser alignment systems. Lubricants are carefully added, either grease or oil, 
depending on the bearing's purpose. Then, the seals are installed to protect the internal components from dust, moisture, and corrosion. At this point, each bearing spins with effortless motion, silent, precise, and durable. Today's supergiant bearing factories are not just about precision, they're also about sustainability. Many use recycled steel, advanced waste heat recovery systems, and coolant recycling to minimize environmental impact. Robotics and AI help reduce energy use by optimizing production schedules and detecting defects before they happen. The result? A cleaner, smarter, and more efficient manufacturing process that saves thousands of megawatt hours annually while keeping millions of machines turning smoothly. Bearings are everywhere, and without them, modern life would literally grind to a halt. They make it possible for engines to run, trains to roll, fans to spin, and even dental drills to operate. Each one, no matter how small, carries enormous importance in keeping motion alive. It's said that bearings are the heart of motion, and in many ways, that's true. Because when motion is frictionless, progress becomes unstoppable. If you found this journey fascinating, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep things turning smoothly. Every year, Americans use over 100 billion plastic bags. That's more than 300 bags for every single person in the country. But have you ever wondered, where do all those bags go once they've been used? Do they end up choking landfills and oceans forever? Not anymore. Across the United States, supergiant recycling plants are taking these flimsy single-use plastics and turning them into something new. Packaging, pallets, decking, and even brand new bags. Today, we're going inside one of these incredible facilities to witness how billions of bags are given a second life. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, because we bring you the most mind-blowing processes happening inside the world's biggest factories. Plastic bags as we know them were first invented in the early 1960s by Swedish engineer Sten Gustaf Thulin, who designed the now iconic lightweight polyethylene bag with a simple fold and seal design. By the 1970s, supermarkets across Europe and the US adopted these bags because they were cheap, waterproof, and more durable than paper bags. By the mid-1980s, plastic bags had completely overtaken paper in American grocery stores. But what started as a convenience soon became an environmental crisis. These thin bags were used once but lasted hundreds of years in landfills. By the 1990s, billions of bags were littering streets, clogging waterways, and even ending up in the oceans. In fact, researchers discovered that plastic bags were a major contributor to the infamous Great Pacific Garbage Patch, a floating island of waste twice the size of Texas. Recycling plastic bags wasn't easy. Early municipal recycling programs couldn't handle them, since the thin film would jam machines. For years, most plastic bags went straight to landfills. But in the early 2000s, major retailers began experimenting with in-store collection systems, and specialized recycling plants were developed to process film plastics separately. Today, companies in the US and around the world run supergiant recycling facilities dedicated to this task. Instead of treating bags as worthless trash, they are now seen as a valuable resource. These innovations not only prevent pollution, but also support a booming industry that transforms billions of bags into new packaging, decking materials, and industrial products. A far cry from their disposable beginnings. 